What a wonderful song. Praise God. Soon and very soon, we are going to see our king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see our king. No more crying there. We are going to see our king. No more dying there. We are going to see our king. What a wonderful assurance, my brothers and sisters. It's another night of Bible studies. It's another Wednesday night as we come in the presence of God. Yes, with God's people to hear from God's words. And I want to welcome heartily all of you who are here with us tonight as you join us in our time of our study. And I'm happy to see somebody who I've not seen in many years but was one of our committed and diarted Christian sister at Greater Portmore. Sister Charmaine Beadle, welcome. Nice seeing you, Sister Charmaine. It's good seeing you. Yeah, we remember those days. We have run the rounds. Yes, praise God. Uh, a sister who, who loved the Lord and has com was committed to the work and the word of the Lord at Greater Portmore for years. And I know she's not here with us now. Um, she's away in the States. But we are glad to have you tonight joining with us um sister charmaine god bless you god bless you nice avenue um nice to see also um my deacon deacon Carr, and um sister shauna k and um some of the other persons i'm not sh making out the name well but welcome to you all to another night of um bible study as we come into your house, wherever you are in the world, we welcome you. Whatever time of the day it is, we welcome you. And we pray that our time will be very fruitful as we look into the word of God. As we continue on the study, the comfort of his coming. Jesus is coming back. And so it is the comfort of the coming of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for tonight. Thank you tonight for allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you again, Lord, for just teaching us your ways and your words. Father, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And we pray that even now, Lord, you will illuminate understanding. You will make teaching easy and understanding easy. We, we bless your name tonight, Father. And we pray that you will continue to lead and to direct us. Lord, as we give you thanks, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, welcome to all who are here with us on the live stream and all those who will be joining. And for those who might not be able to join tonight, but you'll be seeing it tomorrow, next week, next month, I pray that as you listen to the word, the word of God will impact your heart. So a blessed evening to all tonight, all of you. God bless you and thank you for joining. We are going back to our text, 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. As we continue on the path and verse 13. And I'll read again. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of our Lord will by being no means proceed those who have gone ahead, fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air, in the cloud, to meet him in the air, 
and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. We have been looking on the text and on the theme, the comfort of his coming, over the last four weeks. And we will continue and continue into next week as we get a little more deeper each week into the things of God concerning the last days, some of the things that we are seeing happening, all right? But we are speaking on the aspect of what we call the rapture. I shared with us already that the word rapture is not in the scripture, all right? And so it's an English word, all right? It comes out of the word rapture, which is rapture, the English word. But in the Bible, you will see it, the term caught up, caught away, cease. Those are the terminology that is used, biblical terminology that is used. And so we just said, call it rapture, right? So if somebody challenge you on the word rapture, don't, 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 don't challenge them on that. The word is not there. But there are, are many terms that is used in the scripture to describe it and we see one right here in first Thessalonians um, 4 and verse 13 all right we see right here in the the in the scripture now we are at a section that we are dealing with the great reunion all right so we said the, 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 this is a reunion this is the, the fifth essential that we must know as Christians that brings hope to the children of God. For those who have fallen asleep in Christ, the Bible said they will rise first. So you and I are not people without hope. We have a solid hope, a confident hope that one day, one day we will, if we live to see the coming of Christ, then we will be caught up in the air to be with the Lord. And we will meet with our brothers and sisters, our family members who have gone ahead of us. The word sleep is used concerning the believer and not so much death. Jesus used the word death one time with Lazarus. When Jesus said to the disciple, Lazarus sleeps. The disciple said, if he sleeps, master, let him rest. Why go and wake him? So they didn't understood what the master was saying. But Jesus has already said, Father, I say this because of their lack of understanding. Then Jesus says, Lazarus is dead. All right? So Jesus used the word Lazarus is dead for clarity for the disciple who did not understood when he said Lazarus sleeps. No. So the believer who died in Christ, they are asleep in Christ and waiting that day. No. It will be a reunion the christians will come together again and that's where we are where we are tonight dealing with the the reunion and where do we find that in the scripture verse 17 says then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up that's the word caught up all right where we use the english word rapture but it's caught up we are alive will caught up together with them in the cloud with them them who have died and gone ahead of us, we will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, not on the earth, but in the air. It's very important that we distinguish the, the catching away of the church different from the second coming of Jesus Christ. The second coming of Christ is when Christ comes in the earth and we will reach there. But we are talking about the catching away of the saints now, right? And so we will meet him in the air and thus we shall be with him always. Yes? So this will be a grand reunion of the dead in Christ and the believers who are alive. Yes, it will be a grand reunion. We looked on last week that it will be a glorious meeting. Yes, it will be a glorious meeting. And we looked on last week things like school reunion, school meeting. You have not seen your friend for many years. And 
the school have a reunion, the, the church as a reunion, the, the, the workplace as a reunion, the, the football team as a reunion, and all those players come together again. And all of us come together and we're so happy to see each other. We would have been happy to see each other as we rejoice and talk with each other and all the rest. But the thing about that reunion, it's just for a moment. It's momentary. That reunion will end in about four or five hours. But the Bible says this reunion with our loved one and our savior, it says, and we will meet him in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Always be with him. So we will see him in his full glory. Yes, we will always be with God. So it is a glorious meeting. We also look that it is an everlasting meeting. But last week we closed off by saying it's also a time of reckoning. It's a time of reckoning. Yes, it's a time of reckoning. And we looked on the, the terminology reckoning and what it is saying to us. Now, this time of reckoning in the Bible is called the judgment seat of Christ. It's a time where every believer will give an account of the life that they live in the flesh. So it's a, it's, it, it's a time of reckoning. When we caught up in the air to be with the Lord, it will be a rejoicing time. But it will also be a time where we'll give an account of our stewardship. The Bible said it is required of a steward to be found faithful. So one of the requirements and one of the first requirements of a steward in the scripture is that the steward must be found faithful. Faithful. And so we will all stand before God. The Bible calls it the judgment seat of Christ. Or it will also be called the Bema Judgment. The Bema. B-E-M-A. The Bema Judgment. Yes? And we see those in Romans chapter 14 and verse 10. When it speaks about standing out the judgment seat of Christ. And 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. The Greek word Bema, which is translated judgment seat, refer to the place where Olympic judges award crowns to the winners. So in the Old Testament, what you will see are between the Testament, those who were at the Olympic Games in the scriptures, they will receive their reward. <clears throat> yes, yes, my sister, very good. And so, it's a time when all all will now come at that judgment seat. So at that beamer in the scripture, all right, in, in those days at the Olympic Games, they would always award the person. The person who gives out the award sit on the beamer, the seat. Yes? Now at the judgment seat, at, 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 this, at the judgment seat, judgment is carried out as well as reward is given. All right. So for the believer, for the, the believers who are caught up to be with Christ, yes, it is not a matter or if we are going to heaven. We are not at the beam or the judgment seat of Christ to determine whether we go to heaven or else. That's not it. We will be there to be judged according to our works. Yes. Now at the beam of judgment or the judgment seat of Christ, only believers will be there. Only believers will be there. Now, in the great white throne judgment, that's a different one. And I'm going to read that tonight to show us the three major differences between the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Because people mix them up all the time. So I'm coming to that. All right, so we will all be seated to receive our reward according to. Yes? No. What are, what are the difference between the judgment seat of Christ 
and the great white throne judgment. Now, let me, I've just, well, last week I read 1 Corinthians, and I'll be going back there, for, for 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8 to 15, and also Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. So let me read Revelation chapter 20 as I deal with the great white throne judgment. All right, so it's Revelation chapter 20. And um, we'll be reading from verse 11. So it says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before god so when you hear this it sounds as if it's speaking to the rapture or the bema and so people mix them up all right and so the great and small will be standing before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged according to their works and the things which were written in the book the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades deliver up the dead who were in them, and they were judged each one according to their works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone who found written in the book of life, oh, was anyone who not found in, written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. So that is the great white throne judgment. No, it says right here that and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open which is the book of life. No, the difference between the great white throne judgment and the judgment seat of Christ. First, at the great white throne judgment books will be opened. The book of life will be opened yes and it says and the dead will be judged out of those books all right according to their works it also said apart from the book it says that death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire and it speak of the second death and anyone who is not found in the in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire now in the in the in the 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 the, 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 the judgment seat of christ there will be no books that will be opened all right there will be no books that will be opened. At that judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, there will be no depart from me and go to hell in, and cast into the lake of fire. That will not be there. But at the great white judgment, you will see that. So at the uh, next thing is that at the judgment seat of Christ, only believers will be there. At the great white judgment, only unbelievers will be there. There's a difference between them. Secondly, at the great, at the great, sorry, at the judgment seat of Christ, which is the Bema, that happened immediately after the rapture. But with the great white throne judgment, after it, this comes after a thousand year kingdom reign. So there will be a long period of reign in the earth before the great white throne judgment. But the judgment seat of Christ, it happened when the believers are taken up to be with the Lord. Also, the judgment seat of Christ or the bema determine rewards for the save. At the judgment seat of Christ, it determines the amount of judgment that they will get. So they are different. And if we mix them up, then we will be in problem. Yeah? So only believers will be at the bema judgment of Christ. Where our works will be judged because we would have already been heaven bound we would have already been taken up in the catching away of the saints so that would not be a period of whether we go to hell or heaven we would have already been taken up with christ all right so i want us to to keep that distinction very clear in our minds all right so we will not only meet with our Lord Jesus Christ in this catching away but we will also be reunited with the believing dead as I said 
those are our friends and believers who have gone ahead of us and together with them yes it will be a great time of encouragement my brothers and sisters death death is the great separator death separates whether it's physical death or spiritual death physical death separates us from our loved one in the physical realm spiritual death separates us also yes and so death is a separator death is the great separator but jesus is the great reconciler he will bring us again together what a day that will be yes when more jesus we will see yes it will be a day of rejoicing a great day of reunion with our brothers and sisters it's all it's a time of reckoning yes as we stand before god the truth is the bible does not reveal all the details of the reunion of that courting up and every single thing that will happen when we are caught up. the bible does not reveal all that but a day is coming on that day we will see what it all entails all right when jesus you remember the story when jesus raised the widow's son in luke chapter 7 verse 15 you know i came across this today as i was um, just re revising the, the the widow in luke chapter 15 luke 7 and verse 15 when jesus raised the widow's son from the dead what jesus do the bible says jesus deliver the son to the mother jesus said here is your son jesus deliver yes the, the that son who came back to life to his mother this suggests that our lord will have the happy ministry of reuniting broken families and friendship so when he, when he brought back the widow's son to life jesus said here is your son can you imagine the rejoicing that day in the scripture when that woman received back her son to life can you imagine that day when lazarus came back to life and went back to his family can you imagine the the, the, the rejoicing that was yes my brothers and sisters it's the same rejoicing that will be when jesus will caught us up in the air and we will meet again with our loved one and friends who have gone ahead of us we look forward for that day now i want to say something that people always ask pastor when we get to heaven will we know each other sure sure no there's a text in matthew 17 matthew 17 verse 1 to 5 the transfiguration when jesus with peter james and john went on the mount of transfiguration and while they were there you know jesus was glorified and so the disciples saw listen now peter james and john peter says lord it was good for us to be here not only good here what peter go and said father gee lord can we build some tabernacle here that we'll just stay here we'll not, we'll not, no, no make we go back down and down there so we'll just stay up here so the experience was so good he said lord can we build tabernacles here and we said it's a believer he said let us build one for elijah let us build one for moses and he named them because he saw them the bible says that moses and elijah came and was there and peter saw them and knew that it was moses and elijah no we need to recognize that peter came on the scene centuries after moses moses and elijah died centuries before peter came peter did not know peter did not know them in the flesh peter saw them and he knew it was moses and elijah my brothers and sisters we will know each other when we get there though i don't know moses and james and peter and john 
when we get together on this great reunion, we will know each other. We will see them. Yes, and they will know us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12, it says, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also am known. Now we are seen through a glass darkly. In other words, we are not seeing everything fully. But the day is coming when everything, everything will be known to us. Yes, my brother, a level of consciousness beyond our capabilities. So we will see our brothers and sisters. We will see our loved one. It's a day of rejoicing. Even though it's a day of reckoning when we shall stand before God and give an account to God. Coming back to that a little in 1 Corinthians. But it would be good for us as Christians to examine our own art if we are ready to meet the Lord. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready to, to meet the Lord? Yes, my sister, we will know even as I'm known. Are you ready to meet the Lord? That's a personal evaluation. That's a personal thing for all of us to look into our heart and to see, are you ready? Yes, to meet the Lord, to be with our Savior. One of the mark of a Christian, and I don't want to say true Christian, you know, because sometimes we put all these describing things before Christian. Are you a true Christian? Who is a true Christian? I, I don't like use those terminology. Boy, the person, the person is a true Christian. The one is a real Christian. No. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian. Yeah? So I don't bother with the real and the true Christian. But I understand what people are saying. Because they are saying it because of a person's lifestyle or something like that. But once you're a child of God, you're a child of God. Yes, you're a child of God. You're either, or, yes, you're either the child or you're not. All right? So, the truth is that, my brothers and sisters, one of the mark of a Christian is his, his, his or her eagerness looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10. Hear what it says. First is 1 and verse 10. It says, And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who deliver us from the wrath to come. If you back up a little, you will see. Let me read verse 9. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we add to you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for, or the scripture says to wait, some says to look for his coming. To look for his coming. So one of the signs of a child of God is someone who is looking for his coming. Are you looking for his coming? Oh, very, all right, good question, Joan. Uh, do we give an account when we get to heaven or it's just the one who goes to hell? Good question. No. As Christian, we will give an account to God. Yes? When we get there. But while we are in the earth, while we are living our lives, we also must give an account to while we are living our life. Because the life that we are living now, you know, the truth is that the final accountability is not so much while we are in the air, but when we are caught up to be with the Lord, that's the final accountability. So, yes, when we get and stand before God, we will all have to give an account to God. All right, so the Christians who are looking for his coming, the Bible says, yes, it's someone, it's a sign, yes, when you look forward for the coming of the Lord. As we grow in the Lord. Yes. We not, o we not only look for his appearing. But we also love his appearing. 
2 Timothy 4 and verse 8. Let me read that. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8. So not only do we look for his coming, but we must love his coming. Finally, it says, There is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And this is what Paul says, And not only to me, but also to all who love his appearing. So my brothers and sisters, not only do we look for his appearance, we must also love his appearing. Yes? Paul said the reward will be given not only to me, Paul, but to all those who love his appearing. Appearance. You, you, you can ask question while I'm going. You can ask question while I'm going. All right? You can ask question. I'll read it and we'll answer. All right? So, we are looking forward for that day when, when Jesus Christ is coming, coming back. And we, we look for his appearance and we also love his appearing, appearance. Because, why should we look for and love? Because we have this hope. We have this hope in him. And if we have this hope in him, then we keep our life pure. No, let me read 1 John. Yes, let me read 1 John chapter 2. And hear what it says again to us as believers. So we must look, love his appearance, his coming, and we must look for his coming. But 1 John chapter 2. And I'll read verse 28. Verse John chapter 2. It says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Very important, brothers and sisters. Little children, abide in him. Remain steadfast in him. That when he appears, yes, we will have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practice righteous, righteousness is born of God. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of him. Beloved, know are we children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but when he comes, when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And listen to this. And everyone who has this hope, what hope? The hope of Christ coming back will purify himself. So what this is saying, my brothers and sisters, that those of us who are Christians, yes, those of us who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ for their salvation, everyone who has the hope of seeing him coming back, purify himself. Yes, as he is pure. So the, the, the coming back of Christ, the, the catching away of the saints, is something that should challenge the believers to live a pure life. Yes, why? Because accountability is coming when we shall stand before God. To give an account to the Lord. Yes. So we ought to all ensure. Yes. We ought to ensure as brothers and sisters. That we live in such a way. That pleases the Lord. My brothers and sisters. Death. Is a fact. It's a fact of life. Death. The only way we can escape death. Is to be alive when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And so, if the Lord returns today, then you and I will not see physical death, but we will experience an immediate change in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Some classify that as a death too that will take place, but it will happen so fast, yes? So, death is a fact of life, yes? Death is not an accident, oh Lord. Death is not an accident. It is an appointment. The Bible said it is appointed unto man once to die.
but after that comes the judgment hebrews 9 and verse 27 death is an appointment yes can you compare the, the contrast can you compare and contrast the rapture and the return as clearly two different events yes and the truth is that you know it was it really is next week i'm gonna touch on that but let me say something on it my sister all right the second coming of christ is different from the rapture now with the rapture or let me use the catching away of the saints let us be politically right for those who will chastise us the catching away of the saints yes that will be sudden the second coming of christ is not sudden next week i'm going to give you five differences all right but let me just share on it a little bit the 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 the, 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 the catching away of the saints that is sudden yes that will happen sudden and that can happen tonight right now the second coming of christ will not be sudden there are events as a matter of fact the bible says which we'll be going to next week it talks about a restrainer that is restraining the man of sin to be revealed so the man of sin has not yet been revealed yes the rapture will take place and i believe from what we have looked at maybe three weeks ago why the church will not go through the tribulation i've given a number of reasons why from the scripture we believe i know that there are different theory and people all different theory mid-trib post-trib all right um and, and pre-trib we, we are mainly pre-trib people meaning that we believe the rapture the snatching away will take place before the tribulation period jesus said the church will not um be a, is not appointed to go through that but there are others who say otherwise but that's okay for them all right but what i'm saying is this that the second coming of christ there are a lot of things that need to happen one before the second coming the man of sin is revealed then the 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 the, the, the restrainer would need to be taken away the bible speaks to what is it that is restraining that person which is called the son of perdition to be revealed that will deceive the people yes yeah man very good yes so for sure you there are many many different um differences but as i said i will i will come on that next week because there are many things happen for the second coming of christ the second coming of christ also a next one the, the rapture or the taking out of the church nowhere it says christ came to the earth it says he came in the air in the air and those who are alive will be caught up and meet him where in the air in the second coming it speaks to christ coming to the earth landing on the earth putting his feet on the earth so there are differences between both and i am fully aware that people there are major debates and you know people hold different view but from our biblical perspective as we take it you know we see a clear difference between both all right a clear difference between both now let me just speak to one passage and then we close up for tonight in our time of study as usual i don't want to detain us too long yes we want to honor certain things now in first corinthians chapter three first corinthians chapter three i read it last week but let me just read a few verses from it which talks about paul plant and apollos um you know water I, I plant apollos water but god gave the increase first corinthians chapter 3 no verse 10 says according to the grace of god which was given to me as a wise master builder i have laid a foundation and another built on it but let each one take heed how he built for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid already which is jesus christ 
Now, if any man build on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, air, straw, each one work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one work of what sort it is. If any one work which he has built on it endure, he will receive a what? A reward. Yes? And if any man work which... And if any one work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so even through fire. Yes? Now, the logics of the passage here. Jesus says, Paul says, I laid a foundation. This foundation is Jesus Christ. Paul says no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid. In, which is Jesus Christ. Paul says we today, all we are doing today is building on the foundation as a Christian because we have already we have already surrendered our life to Jesus and because we have surrendered our life to Jesus, we are not, we have already sealed into that very foundation. Our foundation is Jesus. Now, we are building on the foundation. Now, one I thing I recognize about a foundation that is very important is the strength of the foundation. Our foundation is rock solid. Rock solid upon Christ. The church was built. We have a rock solid foundation. Yes, that was built. But what we ought to do as we build, first we must build on the foundation. If you are on tonight, or whenever time you come across this message, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, you are not in the foundation. And let me say this again, in every occasion I get to say, all of us are not God's children. Do not believe the lie. We are not all God's children. We are all God's creation. But only those who will receive him, he gave the power to become children. And I'm going to say it over and over and over because there are people out there who strongly believe. I watched last night from the archive of Ian Bowen. I don't know if any of you watched it last night from the Ian Bowen archive. With, with um, Fagan, the Rasta, one of the founding Rastafari in Jamaica. Yes, on many things, and I was watching him. And that is one of the things they are talking about. You know, we are, we are children of God. My brothers and sisters, it's a deep, a deep deception that we are all children of God. It's also a deception. Very good, yes, my brother. It's also a deception. If you believe your works, your good works can get you into the kingdom. It's a deception. It's a deception. Jesus has paid it all at Calvary. And all you need to come and to do is to surrender to the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's all you need to do. Surrender to the finished work and then begin to build on this foundation that the apostle speaks of. So when we are caught up with to be in the air and we are at the beam of judgment, we will be judged according to all we are living now. According to our world. So first, we must build on the right foundation. Second, we must build with the right material. The Bible said wood, a, and straw. If you are, if my brothers and sisters, people do not do a foundation that is six feet deep, six feet of concrete foundation, and then you, you know, you build upon it afterward a fall cube. You build a board structure. No, if you are going six feet deep, you have to build a super structure. Now, if I'm building a fall cube, all I need to do is just scratch the ground a little bit and throw a little bit of cement and just build a fall cube because it's not going any higher. But when you are going to build a superstructure, you must ensure that your foundation is anchored. Anchored. 
<laughs> yeah. The world have a lot to say about them, my sister. <laughs> yes, my brother, that is John chapter 1 and verse 12. As many as receive, he gave them the right to become children of God. And so your anchor after deed. So, my brothers and sisters, build with the right. Build on the right foundation. Second, build with the right material. Don't build with wood and straw. If you build with wood and straw, that will burn up easy, man. If you get a piece of straw or a piece of paper and you light that, that burn up. But if you get gold and you put gold in fire, when you put gold in fire, it all it does is refine the gold more. So you have to build with gold and silver and precious stone. What are gold, silver and precious stone? You're building your life on Christ. You're building your life on the word. On the word, I don't have anything else to tell you to build a life, but build it on the word of God. And so, on every little thing come, on everybody who come and drop corn grain, you're going to open your mouth and be gullible. No. All of this is speaking to the second coming now because we are to make sure that the material we are building with is the right material so that it will not be burnt up. And if the material is burnt up, the Bible said, but you yourself will be saved. Yes? Also, you must build according to the right plan. According to the right plan. And finally, you must build with right motives. Yes? If you build with these four things, right foundation, build on the right foundation, build with the right material, Build according to the right plan and build with the right motive. My brothers and sisters, we can hear, well done, the good and faithful servant. Let us build because Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And yes, my sister, build on the same foundation, not another. The Apostle Paul says, another foundation. Come and come tell me any other thing. Make me a curse. Anatima. Let me be a curse. That's what it says. Anatima. Let me be a curse. So I pray that you, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming back. Let us go forth with the message. This is the message. Jesus is coming back. And every week I'm saying, I know some of us are weird. Pastor, so when we ever get to the time where we talk about the signs, I'm coming to that, man. I have to build the thing. No, just want to start. You build a house and a build from the roof. If you're building a house and a start, put on zinc. If you, oh, you're going to put on zinc and the, and the, the structure and the dead I'm building a superstructure. That's when we get to that structure at the top, we will understand in our interpretation of some serious passages. So I'm building solidly to put on the roof. To put on the roof. I pray that God will straighten all of us. As we look forward for his coming. Because Jesus is coming back. The song says, coming soon. Jesus in all his glory, not just a savior, but what? As a reigning king. My brothers and sisters, I pray that you and I will continue in the work of the Lord because our foundation is solid, because our labor is not in vain in the Lord and so I encourage all of us my brothers and sisters continue to pray for others that they may come into this relationship pray for others that they come to know Jesus pray for our brothers and sisters who are out there who have not yet come into this relationship with Jesus yes man pray for them and that God will bring deliverance to them yes Tomorrow morning is our morning's devotion. 7.30 to 8. Join us again in our morning's devotion. As we continue this week in sharing the word. Tomorrow morning, another of our minister will be coming. Yes? Will be coming to share the word. And we pray that God will bless him 
as he shares the word tomorrow morning with us. So join us tomorrow. Invite somebody. Yeah, man. Invite somebody to come tomorrow morning. Yes, invite somebody to come, man. And continue to pray one for the other, my brothers and sisters, because God is coming again. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for dying for us. Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself to us. Thank you, Lord, that you are our God and early we seek you. Our soul thirst for the living God. Father, you are coming back. So help us, Lord, to look forward for this coming, to love your coming, mighty God, and to begin to, con and to continue to spread the word to others who need to come into this kingdom. I pray that you will lead us and guide us. Grant us a good night rest, Father, and may we continue to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, happy to have you again. And again, let me big up Charmaine. You know, really glad to see you. And it's just the normal you. Remember those days at church, you asked questions until we're sick. And that's the same you. We are glad to have you, Sister Charmaine. And all of us who are on stream, may the Lord bless you. And as usual, I'll go out with one of my favorite songs. You might, don't have to hear this song. It's just my favorite song. God bless you as we go out. Praise God. Now, and it's closer now than you ever been. It's See prophecies fulfilling. I can see the prophecies fulfilling. Oh, yes, I can. Signs of these old times. They're appearing everywhere. My son, go get my children at the midnight cry. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful night with your family. God bless you. And I pray that we will all live to see each other. And if we don't even wake up to be on the air tomorrow, we will be meeting in the air. God bless you.